Harry's Wife, Part 93.12. Another first for me, but not for you. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and you might think that I'm here to read you a bedtime story, to allow you to slip away into the land of Nod and find a restful sleep. And whilst I know that many of you find my soothing, velvety baritone very assuring and comforting that you actually do fall asleep, on this occasion, I'm not here to aid you in doing so, but rather, it's all about the reading of a bedtime story by somebody else. Before I get to that, of course, if you'd like to be lulled to sleep by your glorious narrator, then go to the Knowledge Vault and obtain Distraction, Sleep, Distraction, Autumn. You can also use the video, The Nighttime Narc Slayer. This material will enable you to slip away from a state of consciousness and have a deep and restful sleep. Now, what is all of this about another first for me but not for you? Well, we walk over to the BBC News site, and as always, I leave it for you to determine the veracity of the news articles as I provide you with the unrivaled and expert analysis of what's really going on seen through the lens of narcissism. And it's reported that the Duchess of Cambridge is to read CBB's bedtime story. Those of you outside of the United Kingdom may not be familiar with what CBB's is, but essentially the BBC have a dedicated programme which is for preschool children called CBB's, a play as you'll have no doubt worked out on BBC. It's been going, I think, for about 20 years, and of course wasn't something that was around during my childhood. I, of course, missed it by a mere five years. But it is something of an institution, I understand, and it's regularly utilised by frazzled parents at the end of the day to cause their little ones to pay attention to what's going on and listen to the story and settle down. In my day, I was told I'd get a good larruping if I didn't shut up and settle down. How times have changed. Of course, part of it is that there's always a bit of entertainment for the parents, and that has come with a, a slew of A-listers who have appeared on the programme to read the stories. And it's become something of a coup these days to have these uh, famous people appear and read a story. And so the Duchess of Cambridge is joining their ranks. Let's dive into the story and see what it has to tell us. Well, there's a picture of Kate sat cross-legged on a rug in the bedtime story environment, uh, some stuffed toys around her, and there she is, dressed just in jeans and a sweater, a hair brushed down with her engaging smile as ever. No need for expensive jewellery, no need for expensive clothing, looking down to earth and relatable. Oh, how somebody else would love to be able to achieve that. The news article tells us as follows. The Duchess of Cambridge will give the CBB's bedtime story slot the royal treatment with an appearance to mark Children's Mental Health Week. The Duchess has chosen to read, read childhood classic The Owl Who Was Afraid of the Dark by Jill Tomlinson. It follows the story of Plop, a baby owl, it's a rather unfortunate name, who is helped by others to grow in confidence and overcome his fears. The Duchess's reading will air at 6.50pm on the 13th of February. She will be the first royal to read a CBB story. Pioneering. Children's Mental Health Week runs from the 7th to the 14th of February, and the Duchess chose the book because it chimed with this year's theme of Growing Together. This year, children and adults are being encouraged to consider how they have grown emotionally and to recognise how challenges and setbacks can help them mature 
and adapt. Patricia Hidalgo, director of BBC Children's and Education, said, I couldn't be more proud to have the Duchess read a CBeebies bedtime story as we mark the 20th anniversary of our CBeebies and CBBC channels. It's such a special and relevant tale and perfectly represents this year's Children's Mental Health Week theme. I can't wait to see her deliver her own take on such a classic story, and I'm sure our audience can't either. CBeebies bedtime stories have long been a lifeline for frazzled parents whose children are told a calming story at the end of the evening to help lull them to sleep. In recent years, it has attracted some big names keen to lend a soothing voice, including Hollywood actors such as Tom Hardy, who got involved in 2016. Let us hope that he didn't do it in the voice of Bane. <laughs> Wouldn't have gone down too well, I suspect. Reese Witherspoon was a recent addition to the list, which also features Chris Evans, Tom Hiddleston, Orlando Bloom, and Eddie Redmayne, along with singing talent including Dolly Parton, Sir Elton John, Dave Grohl, and Ed Sheeran, and children's television royalty such as Dame Floella Benjamin. Other big names lining up to open a CBB storybook include Bridget and actor Reggae Jean Page, Author Michael Rosen, Olympic athlete Dame Jessica Ennis Hill, astronaut Tim Peake, who read from space, actors Emily Watson and Ewan McGregor, and TV chef Nadia Hussain. So the Duchess is going to make a PR friendly appearance reading to the children, and it has received favourable coverage as it links with her work with regard to mental health. How, of course, would this be received by Harry's wife, as she learns about her nemesis reading this bedtime story. This news is bound to come across her bows, because, although she will not keep an obsessive view on her nemesis, she will want it reported to her what her nemesis is up to. And therefore, this kind of event would be brought to her attention, and it's exactly the type of thing that Harry's wife would want to do herself. Admittedly, not necessarily in the United Kingdom, because she views that as a hostile environment for her. But it was seen, of course, with her reading to the children in Harlem, and, of course, her own reading that took place on the bench of Stench, that she sees herself as somebody that does read. Now, We've yet to hear the Duchess of Cambridge's offering, although it's already been recorded, but I can imagine that it isn't in the sickly sweet tones that were adopted by Harry's wife. Moreover, we already know that the Duchess of Cambridge is not going to read her own book, not engaging in such egocentric and narcissistic behaviour as Harry's wife did. As you know in parts pass him, Harry's wife decided that she would bowl up wearing expensive clothing and jewellery to an impoverished school in Harlem and then to torture the young charges being educated there by reading from her own piece of literary nonsense. And then she followed up on it with a reading from the gardens at Monte Shitcho before the real stink arrived and created her own stench from the bench on that particular day by reading from it with the resultant effect that there were more dislikes for the video than likes no doubt prompting the change in policy by YouTube to no longer show the dislikes on screen. The equivalent of being roundly booed off stage if she had been performing in a theatre. The fact that she sees herself as someone that can connect with the children, that is there to love and cherish them, and that her own publication is so important it has to be read to them by her, cl clashes with this appearance with the Duchess of Cambridge. The Duchess of Cambridge reads a different publication. She is able to relate to people in a natural way which isn't forced because she has emotional empathy. Doubtless, the Duchess will have her detractors from doing this, and I can well imagine that in parts future I will be reporting upon a response by the Sussex Squad and the Sugars to this appearance with their normal vitriolic manner. But, leaving that aside for now, how might Harry's wife operate when she realises that this royal first has been achieved by 
the nemesis. Naturally, it will wound her. No fuel is being given towards her by the Duchess of Cambridge because she's not mentioning Harry's wife, but the very fact that the Duchess of Cambridge is doing something which the Duchess of Sussex believes that she should be doing will wound her. Harry's wife's sense of entitlement tells her, you should be the one reading the bedtime story. Children love you. You're the one that should be reading from your publication, and everybody will love it. Of course, what the narcissism is doing through that delusion is attempting to cause Harry's wife to assert control and to bolster her facade and to draw fuel. Of course, she's not able to do those things. She wasn't picked. She hasn't come first. And therefore, the narcissism will then direct her to nullify the threat to control posed by this wounding that Kate has generated. It isn't the case that Harry's wife is able to storm into the studio, screaming like some kind of coked up banshee, grapple Kate to the ground and pull on her hair as we have some Duchess on Duchess smackdown in the studios at the BBC. Whilst there might be many that would be entertained, and indeed perhaps would even recommend it as a pay-per-view event, we can't see that that is going to happen at all. Instead, the response will be the indirect assertion of control. Criticism. Oh, look at her. Doesn't she think she's fantastic? She can't read for toffee. I would have done it better. They should have asked me. No doubt she will comment in such terms to Harry, who will be looking up from his building blocks, which are still charred and scorched from the last thermonuclear explosion, grimacing, hoping there isn't going to be another one that turns the remainder of them to ash. And of course, he will there, subjugated and brought under control, be tugging his forelock. Yes, miss. No, miss. Three bags full, miss. And in the circumstances... The fact is that she will assert control by smearing Kate and in the circumstances will also be complaining to members of the coterie for the purposes of that indirect assertion of control, but will be doing it consciously. She may also, of course, jettison the thoughts about the Duchess of Cambridge by thinking dark and evil comments about her wishing death and pestilence upon her and thus activate the third assertion of control. The fact remains, the Duchess of Cambridge undertaking this role first of reading a CBB story with her own stock continuing to rise is only going to wound Harry's wife with the consequent behaviours. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>